Well, it's time and what a moment this could end up being. It's part 117 of the head coach today. It is probably the final episode of the series. But what a way to go out. After bottling the league title with Real Madrid, we've got a chance at a remarkable success in our first season here in a Champions League. Back to back with two different clubs. Could it happen? Well, let's go and find out. Yes, hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's part 117 and it may well be the final instalment, but we have got an awful lot to look forward to tonight. We play Hoffenheim, the young attacking aggressive side in the Champions League final after they denied us the chance at a dream final against our former club Manchester United. But despite not winning the La Liga title, which we aim to do in the long term here, we have got a chance to immediately complete a brilliant objective. If you get back-to-back -back Champions League finals, you've reached the Holy Grail. And I don't think we can achieve any more in this save. So if you're looking forward to seeing if we can get across the line and do it on the final day of the season, then please do put a thumbs up on the video and subscribe down below for daily FM22 content. The action continues because we had a big transfer special in the Hemel save yesterday. I hope you're looking forward to season 14 in that one. You can find yesterday's episode up in the eye above. There's also links up there to the Twitch channel where we'll of course be live on Wednesday for the Europa Conference final. The football podcast with playoff final predictions on the way and finally the merchandise store too you can also support the show as a channel member by clicking the join button down below but it's all getting a bit much today isn't it it is a big final and it is a chance to win back-to-back -back champions leagues to do that is an incredible achievement to do it with two different clubs to do it here with an injury hit squad of over 30s would be absolutely remarkable the club needs it as well because financially it's in a mess it's not competing domestically so this would be the way to turn an okay season in which we finished second, achieved the board objective and won the Spanish Cup into a brilliant one where we become champions of Europe. So hopefully you're looking forward to that. I certainly am. I don't rate our chances too highly though, it must be said. We'll also have the end of season review at Real Madrid. And of course, in a couple of days time, we will be starting a new save here on the channel. So I hope you're looking forward to that. But what a way to start the week and end the series in this save. It certainly should be a big one. We are back for Champions League final day with injury knocks. And that is Alexi Sailmakers and Robert Altmaier. So first things first, let's have a quick catch up with those. Because we want to know who we've got available today. And it is the end of a love story with Arian Kalantari. How fitting would it be if he scored the winning goal? So Altmaier, 5 to 11 days left out injured. He's been out since February. Alexi Sailmakers, 1 to 2 days. Juan Foyth just back, but not at full condition. I have no idea whether to gamble and chuck these kids on the bench or whether we should just give it a miss. Let me know what you think in the comments. Of course, I will have made my decision already before I see it, but I'm not sure what to do here. I hope that it doesn't come back to bite us on the backside, but with the level of bench we've got, maybe there's no harm in trying. So that's the injury news. Let's then go to the schedule because we have played some games off camera. We had some games left in La Liga, and as you can see, we wrapped up second place. The reason we were able to do that is because Real Sociedad had Atletico Madrid and Barcelona. Barcelona actually lost their last two games. I'm not quite sure what they were saving themselves for. They haven't got any other games left. Maybe it was just going on the beach after the job was done. But we managed to get two wins out of three. It was all very tight, all very narrow, and we weren't really scoring goals. We won 1-0 away at Real Betis. Thomas Sorantes had a blinding game and scored there. Harry and Kalantari missed a penalty too. Against Bilbao, it was Vinicius Jr. and Roberto Bandera. And against Valladolid, it was a 0-0 draw at home. Which means, if we go all the way back, he has not scored since the first leg of the Champions League semi-final. Five games without a goal for Arian Kalantari. You all know what that's going to mean, don't you? We're going to look at his profile, the top scorer in La Liga and in the Champions League so far this year. We're going to give him the old warning. We're going to tell him... You need to score a few more goals, Sunshine. So let's give him this one. I believe in your ability to help this team and I'm not worried about your goal scoring form. It'll all come back soon enough. Oh, he's upset. Oh, that's a good start, isn't it? I've managed to upset the star before we start the game. 
Oh, I have never, ever seen a negative reaction to that. Is that the pressure of a Champions League final, or have I just done something awful? I don't know. Don't let it end like this, Ariane. Don't let it end like this. We need you. The one thing I do want to say, which we said when we joined the club, is we would make him an England international. Well, he got his cap in the March international break too. So we have turned Kalantari into an international footballer. It's actually wanted by AC Milan. Maybe I could just carry on this save and follow Kalantari wherever he goes. But Hoffenheim is the centre of attention. They have got one player out in Oscar Alves. He's out with a gash lower leg, but he's not one of their stars. We had a brief look at them in the last episode. They have got an unbelievable side. They're led by Sandro Schwartz, now 55 years of age in game, was at Mainz and Dinamo Moscow in real life. But he's a class act. He's got good tactical knowledge. He's a good motivator. And he's got a great personality too. The captain, Gonzalo Barone, he is one of the other under 30s. He is a goalkeeper, not even their first choice. So we won't be seeing him tonight. The vice captain, though, is a superstar. Montenegrin international Bogdanovic. And he is electric quick. He's great in behind. It's basically a taller version of Kalantari. You can see 10 goals in the Champions League this year. They're basically fighting it out for the golden boot. So after finishing second in the Bundesliga, we mentioned they've got a very young squad. They're vibrant, they're attacking, and they're going to cause us all sorts of problems, I'd imagine. We've looked at some of the stars. One of the ones I wanted to pick out was this Turkish midfielder, because he's so good on the ball. He's got great vision. He's got a good personality too. The right backer at 20 years of age. Looks like he could be one of the best players in the world moving forward. Probably as good as someone like Sonny Pavati, who we had at United. Far better than any of the fullbacks we've got at Real Madrid. And in their first choice keeper, a 25. Well, he's one of the best going in the business. So this is going to be a very difficult test. They've got a mix of strikers that play in different styles. They've got brilliant defensive talent. And they've got that little dot of experience where it's needed to. So for Hoffenheim, they've basically got one of the best sides in Europe. And the only reason they're not winning their domestic league is because they've got Bayern Munich in front of them. But they battered Manchester United, whose squad we know are very strong. They still won the Premier League this year. So Hoffenheim is going to be a difficult test. We know how they got here, not just by hammering United, but also by comfortably beating Porto, Atletico Madrid, who we've struggled with at times this year, and in a group with Inter, Besiktas and Sevilla. To be honest, they made it look pretty easy. Stayed unbeaten too. In fact, have they lost a game in this Champions League yet? Not at all. They have not lost a single match. This becomes very difficult now, doesn't it? So let's go and get into the big night. There's no point putting it off any longer. It's nerves, it's tension, but it's an opportunity to become one of the best managers of all time. Back-to-back -back Champions League wins with different club is some feat, but are we going to be able to do it with this squad that's basically on the edge, isn't it? It's so old, it's so experienced, and it's missing some stars. Sailmakers, Altmaier, Foyth, they're nowhere near really. We get 12 subs, so might be able to chuck one on the bench, but let's go and put together our best 11, and we'll be back in a minute to run through it. And as we head to today's game, we have made one particularly massive decision in this team. Firstly, all three of the players that were available were on the bench today, because we've only got 11 subs with that. And in fact, let's just go and pick someone else out the B team, because there's no point having a spare slot. What positions are we particularly short? I think looking at it is probably as a striker, isn't it? But we haven't really got one of those. So we're going to go for either Jun Wei, who is a solid enough player, or Kike Jimenez, who perhaps is the more likely option. Samurio, someone who's contributed before. I'm going to go for him, I think. Or do I chuck that 16-year-old on the bench? That might be the best option of the lot. Let's give him an experience of a lifetime. Roberto, he's probably the best of the lot, in my opinion, as well. He comes on as sub-12. We have made one big decision on the right wing. I've gone for form over experience and quality. No Martinelli. No Sailmakers with his knock. No Pedro Neto and a change of shape. I'm going for Sorantes. He's done really well in the last couple of league games. I'm giving him a chance to be a superstar. In goal, we've got Vilka Farines, who just about makes it. Had a little knock himself last week. Safoso is in for Sailmakers with Regeri on the left. Diallo in for Foyth alongside Militao as centre-half. Nianzu fit in the holding role. We know he's going to be crucial. I did think about putting him centre-half and maybe Koulibaly in the holding role, but I wanted to stick with a strong midfield three. Rihar and Antonio swap roles so Rihar can do more of the legwork. Sorantes, the big call on the right. 
Then Vinicius Junior and Ariane Kalantari. We've upset him pre-match, but will he deliver? We need him to. If he doesn't, we probably don't win this game. Three injured players who we basically can't use on the bench. Two youth team players, a backup keeper. Realistically, there's five we can choose from. And if it goes beyond that, we're probably not in great shape. So let's go and get into the Champions League final of 2034. Hoffenheim versus Real Madrid. Last year, we were doing the job with Manchester United. This time, can we do it with our Spanish giants? Never a good sign, is it, when you have to give a player a squad number for a Champions League final. We've made six changes from the last match because we were rotating a bit in the league. And there's a few stars that we've got to close down for our opponents today. Hoffenheim, no mugs at all. Very young. Don't know what it is with the German sides this year. They seem to be immune to that big old squad feeling that everyone else has got. They've got a young side out. All of the stars we mentioned are playing. And there's some very good players on the bench as well. So this is going to be a difficult test. Michael Oliver's the referee. There's English representation aside from us and Kalantari. Well, let's hope that it pays off. We're going to ask the lads to prove a point. We're going to start back on the balance mentality. We don't want to overdo it from the off. But into the first half we go. Through the dressing room. Through the tunnel interview. Everyone's played well. Everyone's in good form. Now please, just let the luck shine on us tonight. Well, it has been a quiet 25 minutes and Hoffenheim hadn't offered an awful lot. So we went to a more positive mentality as before. Militao heads the cross away. We got a little glitch there, which made me think it would be a penalty. But Rihal wins it back. Vinicius finds Antonio, who goes long towards Kalantari. Does well to bring it down on the left. Goes for the big switch of play. That ain't finding anybody, I'm afraid. Though he's nicked it off Herring. The defender makes a howler. Oh, he's put it wide to the post. That was the chance for Kalantari. And it's why we try to G him up pre-match, because if he gets a goal, we suddenly could go and win this 3 or 4. If he doesn't, we're in trouble. But can the free kick deliver? It's the perfect angle. Oh, it's a great save. But it's not enough, I don't think. Rehar puts the rebound in. Please be onside. Kalantari with a stunning strike. It's always that angle. And Rehar's rebound is going to count. 10 minutes to the break. We've had the only shots on target and Real Madrid lead the Champions League final. This could be a dream finish. When we joined this club in the summer, we wanted to win a cup. We wanted to try and catch Barcelona as hard as it was. We wanted more squad regeneration than we got. But a Champions League final and a Champions League win didn't see it in a million years. As the youngster Sorantes released down the right, he's only gone and won a penalty. What a team selection this has proved to be. Gets him behind. And he's so composed. He carries the ball. He waits for the challenge. And that's going to be a penalty. Kalantari takes. Can he end the goal drought? If ever there's the moment to crown an absolute superstar at a save. This is the one. Ariane Kalantari makes it 2-0. The legend of the FM22 head coach. And that name will be one we remember for a number of years on this channel. A half time is Hoffenheim 0 Real Madrid 2, Rehart and Kalantari, what a performance, absolutely superb. Let's go and talk to the lads, get through the dressing room, go and prove your winners. I tell you what, the first half did enough for me, I'll just hold on for 45 minutes. As it's a throw in for Hoffenheim on the left hand side, the first thing we want to avoid is conceding an early goal in the second half. Though that looks a good chance, Savas in, Farinez to the rescue. Made some crucial saves in that last 10 minutes against Barca in the semi-final as we clung on for a 5-4 aggregate win. Well, he's doing the job here again as Rihar heads the corner away. Bastian's out to the right to Sudakov. Inside to Herring. Big switch of play to Ugar. Back again to Mb to Ugar. And it just sort of peters out. That's a little bit of a weird one. But first shot on target for Hoffenheim. Farinez to the rescue. As Bastian's has a throw on the left to Valverde. To Bastian's again. Looking confident at a minute of Hoffenheim. Back to MB and Herring. I'm so excited I've clicked the pause button by mistake because it's back to MB again. He comes over halfway to Bogdanovic and Savar. They're getting him behind a little here. Savar back, Vinicius intercepts and Diallo clears downfield. Excellent work defensively. He's not really got into the game going forward on that left-hand side. But he's won it back yet again. Finds Kalantari. He breaks to Antonio. Sorantes through. Brilliant ball. Oh, he scored in a Champions League final. It's an inspired team selection now. Can I call myself a genius for that one? Sorantes with a goal and an assist. And the Champions League surely is wrapped up. 
with a Real Madrid Academy prospect. That is superb. As Antonio puts Rihar into Sarantes. He scored again. I'm sorry, I'm claiming it now. That team selection above Martinelli, above Neto, above an almost fit sale makers. I'm calling it. That is inspired. We've just gone past the hour mark. We can now enjoy ourselves. Let's bring on a couple of subs. We're going to take off Vinicius Jr. for Gabriel Martinelli. Manuel, another one of the former academy players, will come on for Marcos Antonio. And I know it's tempting to bring youngsters on. I'm torn between two here. Do I bring on Koulibaly because he won us the semi-final? Or do I bring on Alfredo for a Gary at left back? I tell you what, I'm not going to bring Martinelli on. That's how we're going to solve this. I'm going to take off Antonio for Manuel. I'm going to take off Regeri for Alfredo. And I'll make another decision in five more minutes. And it's a good job we waited because the star of the day, Sarantes, has now picked up an injury. He is going to be replaced, and I know this is controversial, by Roberto, the youngster. We've got the luxury at 4-0 of being able to do it. And what a thing to be able to say we've done. What a way to finish the save. I don't think we've got any more subs, have we? We haven't. Three substitutions. There is a 16-year-old on the pitch who will finish the Champions League final. That is something I'm incredibly proud of. The youth academy players on the pitch. The contribution of Sarantes, who'd barely kicked a ball for this club before the season. Circumstance, injuries, poor recruitment, and the director of Football Challenge have all led us to this but it's actually led to one of my happiest moments. Varanez and Militao taking a few too many liberties back there as Manuel forces it back again. Militao carries out of the fence, down the line towards Roberto. I mean, he doesn't even know what to do on the right wing. It's not his position, but he's enjoying the experience, I'm sure, and he might never have a better moment in his career as Bogdanovic down the right goes back towards Mendy, in towards the front post. He's headed just over the bar. Varanez caught in no man's land. But we're into stoppage time. We're four goals up. And this has gone better than I could have ever dreamt. I was hoping we could win it. I thought we might be slight favourites. But 4-0 is incredible. Kalantari got a goal in the final game of the series. That was fitting. A young star has emerged at Real Madrid. And to be fair, all four goal scorers are among the few under 30s at the club. And that shows a sign for the future if Marina recruits around it. They've missed an open goal with two minutes of stoppage time to go. That certainly helps us out because the clean sheet is preserved. Real Madrid win. And I have won the Champions League back to back. Two different clubs. This one, to be honest, we didn't deserve to get to the final. We got lucky against City. We scraped through against Barca. But what a performance when it mattered most. It might be an experienced squad. But the young stars were the ones that came to the party. And our final game of the head coach save is our second successive Champions League win. What a fantastic achievement. What a season with Real Madrid in the end. We bottled the La Liga title race. But I would have taken it for this all day long. We won it with Manchester United last year. We won it with Real Madrid now. Let's go and get through to the season review and say goodbye to this brilliant save. Well, here it is. End of season review time. Two trophies there. Probably the ones I'd have least expected. I would have maybe expected a challenge in the league based on what we've seen at other clubs. And maybe the Super Cup to be the easier to win. But it's in fact the Spanish Cup where we almost went out to Burgos in an earlier round, don't forget. And a Champions League where we've somehow managed to be victorious. Real Madrid always find a way. That is the history of the Champions League, isn't it? Let's look ahead to the signings, because only actually three or four players joined the club since we came in. Not sure why Unai Alonso isn't on this list, but Diallo, one of the ones who did sign, absolutely brilliant. He's made more than nine appearances as well. This is wrong. I think it might be something to do with Champions League appearances rather than the ones in the league, because that is his Champions League record for sure. But a good player, and obviously started the Champions League final. Pedro Neto, solid addition. Juan Foyth, brilliant till he got injured. But not sure why I can't see their league form there. In terms of transfers out, let's see how these guys got on. Riddle Baku left, Devin Wrench, Renato Sanchez, and annoyingly Miguel. Didn't have his best season, but what we could have done to have that on the bench for a lot of the year would have made a massive difference to some of the youngsters at the club. And I don't get it from a director of football point of view. Why sell your young stars for 12.5 million? 
when you've got a squad of all over 30s. Just doesn't make sense. Let's go through to the season results because the Champions League was, of course, the star competition. 14 goals for Arian Kalantari in the end. A Spanish title was blown. We were five points clear at the winter break and ended up losing it by seven. We were 11 behind when we lost the title. And the Spanish Cup and the Spanish Super Cup, well, different results there. We snuck through against Sevilla in the semi-final of this one. We beat Bilbao on penalties, don't forget, as well. But we battered Barcelona late on in the final. And in the Super Cup, it was the other way round. They blew us away 3-0 at half-time, and we couldn't quite recover come the end of the match. Moments to remember. A 6-0 win against Atletico Pamplona. Our first game was our biggest win against Osasuna. The match to remember was a 6-1 against Valencia, that at the end of January. And a 4-2 win at home to Huesca, or goal of the season. I mentioned Koulibaly saving us in that game. And my word, was it a great strike. He scored some important ones as well, particularly the Champions League semi-final. The reputation is back up to five stars. I have restored Real Madrid to the world stage. We've gone up in virtually everything. And once the broadcast revenue settled, that'll be up too. And Kalantari, the top shirt seller, the England international, we've created a new hero. How did we line up? Sarantes gets in team of the year ahead of Altmaier, who got injured halfway through the season. Diallo's in in defence as well. I'm so proud of this side, because it's not the best, but it's professional, it's gutsy, and it's experienced, and it's delivered when it mattered most. The accolades, of course, Kalantari's man of the year. Five goals in a game, most player of the match awards. Vinicius broke the league appearance record, 551. And Roberto became the youngest player of the club's history, and also got a Champions League winner's medal with his final appearance of the season. Interestingly though, the Real Sociedad manager got manager of the year, not the Barcelona one who won the title. Most assists to Pedro Neto, didn't realise that considering he didn't play much. But it's history in the making, it's champions of Europe and champions of the Spanish Cup. What a way to finish the save, I hope you've enjoyed this year's head coach. We will in a couple of days time do a five years in the future just to see how many of these Real Madrid players are still here, have a reflect on our career as well and see how everyone's gone on since. If you're looking forward to that and you did enjoy this episode and this series, please do chuck a thumbs up on it. It's a brilliant way to end. Let me know in the comments how you think it's gone and what are your favourite memories from the series across all of our clubs. If you want to stay up to date with everything else on the channel, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. Of course, as well as the review episode five years later, the Hemel save continues with the new season up in the eye above. And there'll also be a new save on the channel later this week. I hope you're looking forward to that one. Of course, in the eye above, there's links to the Twitch channel, the football podcast and the merchandise store too. And above my head now is yesterday's new season transfer special from the Hemel save. I'll see you back here in a couple of days' time to reflect on the moment five years after we retire from football. I'll see you there. <laughs>